Hi everybody, this is Rosa with Rosa's Quilted Garden and today I'm going to show you how to machine bind both sides your quilt. You might learn some things. Hopefully, if you've never done it before, you might want to try it again. Mm -hmm. Stick around. This is where you're going to see it. Hi. Okay. I'm going to take a great big deep gulp. Here is my Princess Zelda. She's my companion. Uh, she follows me. She's attached to my hip, I think. So this is my quilting room. And remember I told you sometimes it gets really messy? Well, right now I'm in the middle of binding a quilt. And I thought, well, why don't I invite you along to show you how I'm doing my binding? Most of my bindings are done by machine. Uh, if I were to do something, well, you know, like a heirloom quilt or something that I spent a lot of time on, I would probably do it by hand. And uh, I might be putting up a, a vlog on how to do it by hand at some point in the future. But right now we're going to go by machine. So I just wanted to point out, you see this big bag here that's kind of overflowing? That's our leftover batting and snippets of fabric and everything. And there is, uh, it's all washable. So at one, some point when it gets too full, I usually make cat beds. So I'll be making some of those soon. Stick around and uh, subscribe because I will be posting that. So just a moment. As you can see, I'm holding my cell phone. So for this quilt, I decided... Well, let me start over here. What happened is our guild was asked to do quilts for our our local hospice, and we were quite honored. And the only requirement was to put a sunflower in there. Now, see, these are mostly orphan blocks. And uh, I surround them by a unifying color, usually. In this case, it was that yellow. And it was just blocks that I found, and then... Sometimes I surrounded it with the uh, the sunflower and uh, as I said right now I'm doing the binding so I thought well what color shall I do the binding? Well I also have a system that, uh, let me take you around here, try not to move too fast so you don't get dizzy here, but I have a system here that's uh, taken from Bonnie Hunter. She is my absolutely idol. I just love her. And uh, I didn't go quite as far as what she did, but what's loose? Like you see, it's all uh, red and purple. It's all indicated by colors. So what is loose in those containers? It's two inch strips. And what's in the Ziploc are two and a half inch strips. So, I grabbed a bunch of two and a half inch strips and I decided to put them together and I tried to go with the yellow and the browns. So what I've done, as I said, I've put all these pieces together that are odd. And I thought it would add, you know, a bit of interest. If you're in bed and you're not well, you may like to look at the borders or the binding rather and say, oh, look at that. There's horses. Where are my horses here? Here's a picture of a horse. And here's pineapples. So that's going to be my binding. Now, if you don't know how to do your binding on the 45 inch, that might be something, once again, that I'll be showing in the future how I do mine. It's fairly easy. And uh, I've done bindings at different sizes, and I've gone back to the two and a half inch only because I like it, I like what's easy schmeasy. Two inch, two and a quarter inch certainly does a better job, but you have to go slower and I'll be showing you that in the future. But this is a two and a half inch and um, I'm going to finish ironing this and then I'll show you how I put it on the quilt. Okay, normally when I get to this part of the binding, this is where I'd go. Holy Halifax, but I'm glad that we got 
and I'll show you where, where I'm at here. I'm glad that I'm here so that I can give you uh, a trick on, on what happens when you get here. So let's me start from the beginning. When you're machine binding on both sides, you start from the back of the quilt. And this is what I'm doing. And whether you're doing strips of multicolors or it's all the same, at some point you're going to have to sew them on the 45 to, to patch them together. Okay, to sew them together. So if you get to the point where at the very corner, like I am here, and we're binding it, that is not a good thing to be like this because you're going to have a great big lump there. It's not going to work out very well. Let me show you. And then you turn it around. It's going to look horrible. It's going to be all lumpy and bumpy. Now, I'm by no means very fussy, as some of you might know. Uh, I'm, I don't like to make quilts for shows. I just like them to make easy peasy, something that looks complicated but really wasn't. And, well, that's just me. And everybody has their own little niche when it comes to quilting. So, I'm going to show you what I recommend uh, that I we do here so that we don't get stuck with this quarter inch or this uh, 45 degree here and trying to turn it on the corner that's not going to work so let me realign everything here and I'll show you what I did okay so what I did here is I went and cut out this piece it's no big loss it's just a tiny little strip and I cut it off here so that when I go to sew another piece onto this, I'll be able to backspace and the 45 will go here rather than there. It will look a lot better. Now, one thing, I might not have enough um, fabric to attach to the other piece, so I may have to rip a bit. And I didn't want to add, this is the other one here, I didn't want to add black on black, like I try to even though it is kind of scrappy binding, I like to put, you know, dark and yellow and a different color. So I'm going to have to dig in my stash and find another piece here to put in between. Okay, so now I went and added. Remember, I cut off that piece. And then I went and added this beautiful fall color. And then I attached it to my black. Now this was already pre-ironed. I just wanted to show you here that you really need to iron this out and the best way to do this when you're doing uh, binding is to iron it open iron it flat okay so I've got to go to the iron and I don't think you need to watch me do this iron this open the seams and then fold it over just like these are so that it folds over nicely onto itself and I can continue sewing. Okay, so we're getting to the end. Now you might have a different technique than I did, but when I first started out, I would uh, just eyeball it because I'm a very, uh, hmm, I would say uh, arrogant quilter. I think I know it all and I don't need to read the instructions and a bit of issues with that anyhow and I soon realized after a few bindings that my corners weren't the best well uh, then I thought okay Rosa we're gonna have to get the ruler out and measure it let me show you what ruler I was using here just one moment this is being handheld by the way so that's why it's a little bit shaky and I do apologize so you see there the quarter inch is right here so I would lay that up against my edge and I do, do a pencil mark and I would try with my foot and even though it's like a see-through-ish type try to get as close to that pencil mark as possible and it was always a hit and miss because whatever reason I don't know so I finally figured out the best way to do it for me now some of you experienced quilters might do it a different way but I sew it to the very edge, and I think that I'm almost at the very end, and then I'll cut my thread. Then I will look at it and say, oh, it is a quarter inch. Quarter inch really isn't very big. 
or I'd say, oh, I just need to remove, not really remove, loosen up a thread or two, and then I get my quarter inch. I'll show you what I mean. When you think you're almost at the very edge here, and you can feel with your finger, and you can see where the threads are here, see? And in my head, I thought, okay, I'm almost at the edge. But when I lift it up, I said, oh, look, there's a few loose threads here, and I did make it to the quarter inch. I might pull out that last thread there. Gosh darn, we're having trouble focusing. Sorry, folks. I might pull out a thread or two, and then I'll pivot it around and do the 45 degree. So just a moment. Here's another thing I was doing wrong. You know when you, f you do your 45 degrees here, this is hard to film and to hold the camera at the same time. When you do your 45 degree and you... F nope, this is not working. Okay, so when you do your 45 degree, you, you bend your fabric and you fold it over, right? This here is supposed to be one straight line and your edge on here is supposed to be even. This is really horrible, horrible, horrible. I think I'm going to need my tripod. Anyhow, what I needed to do is to make sure that your fabric makes it to the very edge. Sometimes I would go like this. You see that? One eighth of a difference? That made a difference when I went to fold it. So you make sure it goes right to the edge. Make sure that you're 45 degrees. Oh, see, it's not quite. I have to readjust it. And make sure the edge, the edge here, comes out proper. It follows the line. So you've got there to careful to be careful, there to be careful, and make sure that your 45 is 45 degrees on your fold. So once again, here's another corner that uh, you know what's going to happen. It's going to end up with that 45 degree on there, and that's not going to bend very nicely. So I'm going to have to cut this and splice it. I guess that's the word we could use, splicing. So I'll be right back. As I'm holding my camera, I really need to have a better system here. You see, I've got, I'm getting towards the end here, and this is my beginning. You see? So I'm going to just going to lay this flat up against the edge. There you go. And some of you, your jaws might drop and say, Oh my gosh, you can't do that. Well, pff, why not? I just did it. I've done it several times and the quilt police didn't come and arrest me. So what you need to do is you're going to attach these together. I usually put a safety pin. If I flatten that out and that's where it ends and I put a safety pin and that's where it goes rather. Then I put a safety pin and then I will feel the lump here and I'll put a mark through it. So let me set it up and... Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So I've pulled the fabric taut, folded it over, felt the bump. There's a bump there. That's where I put my line. I've got a pin so it's not moving. So I'm going to grab this with my fingers, get this out of the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew up and down here. Instead of doing a 45 inch, I'm going to do up and down. Okay, so I've sewn those two pieces together straight across, not on the 45, and I've pulled them taut, and yes, they do fit. So I'm going to sew them down, and when I get to here, I'm going to open up this seam, because you really don't want, you don't want this sticking out. So I'm going to flatten this out, and that's how we're going to do the seam. Okay, so I'm going to try to give you a clear picture of this. When I sewed this down, I tried to pull this away from the edge. So when you flip it over, that won't be so noticeable. And I'll show you when I get around to that, what exactly I mean. So here's my brother's sewing machine. Not very fancy. It's not at the low end of brother machines that you'd get, let's say, at uh, Walmart. But... Uh, it does a trick. I've had it for quite a few years now, and there used to be a plastic cover thingy up top here, 
and that kind of broke off a couple times so last time I said to heck with it it's not going back on so what I do and this is a great time for you to start getting to know your machine if you're going to try this get out some scrap fabric and practice what kind of fancy stitch you would like on your binding you don't have to do a fancy stitch I just find some of these stitches are more forgiving than if you just do one straight line now normally that's another thing too is I would try to match my thread with either the back or the the binding or sometimes it's it's a playing on which one is going to look better sometimes I feel confident and I really want an outstanding thread to really well to stand out in this case since the binding is made out of scrap two and a half inch and some of it is light yellow and some of it is dark yellow and as you saw some of it is brown um, I'm going to go with the white thread I'm going to be a bit, a bit brave here and we'll see where we go so let me show you how I figure out which and I've tried different ones I'll be honest with you I've tried different stitches and I always seem to go back to the same one I'm going to go here you see my stitchery whoops nope there and I go to the leafy one here which I've done by the way I just scroll across I seem to always take the same one done that one before I've done that one before I think I've done that one but this is the one I always go to it seems to be more forgiving Click on OK. That's what it's going to look like. Now, mind you, I could make it smaller or less tight or bigger, but I always go with what's standard there. As I said, I'm not usually a fussy kind of girl here. So my main goal is to attach the binding on the other side to do it quick because I just don't have time to sit around and do a fair size quilt here by hand. And I've already committed so normally when you do binding if you're going to do it by hand you would sew it from the top flip it over and then this side you would do it by hand but since I'm machine binding it's the complete opposite as you sew on the back we're going to flip it over to the top and it's going to give us more maneuverability to hide this see that line that line that's sewed here that there is what attached the binding. So my main goal is to hide all of this. To make sure I can pull where it's there's no loose pockets here. That it's nice and tight. And um, make sure it doesn't come apart. So let's see. We will. I'll show you when I get to the brush. Okay, so I'm still quilting along here. Just wanted to tell you, not a great fan of pins unless I absolutely need them as I said I'm some somewhat of a, a lazy quilter or easy schmeasy but uh, I think when you get to these corners I've tried to do it by hand and it just doesn't work so you really need to stick a pin in there temporarily until the uh, foot you know gathers on this corner here and you've got the the needle in there and then you can pull the pin out and pivot it around so folks, I've just finished the binding. I think I did a pretty darn good job. I don't want to brag, but the trick is practice, practice, practice. And you know what the best thing to practice on is? Placemats, mug rugs, cat mat or dog mat. These people don't mind. You need to pull out, I would practice on scrap fabric. Finally find the one that you really like. Now this is that decorative stitch, but done on the darker binding part. As you can see, it looks pretty darn good. And then we get to this part here, which is another color of the binding. Get a good shot here, so you can barely see that decorative stitch. Cut to the corner, and then we get back into the uh, darker one where you see it better. And the lighter and so on and so forth oh yeah that's my slogan isn't it 
So here's the final part of doing a binding on the quilt. And um, I found that this helps an awful lot. So I put a safety pin here. It's temporary and it's pointing. I always say it's pointing towards that way. So what I do is sometimes I take off my glasses. I can see better without my glasses, but I will go the whole length and cut any loose threads. The safety pin, I'll point back to the safety pin, is just to tell me when I've gone all the way around. And when I come back across and I come towards here, then I know I've done all this side and all the loose threads and anything that I can catch gets cut. Or, holy Halifax, if, um, you know, it didn't catch quite or there's some fabric poking out, then I might have to take it all apart, that certain section, and redo it. So then once that's finished, I take out the safety pin, and I will go on the other side. Let's go see, for example, here. I will put the safety pin, and I'll make sure that it's pointing towards there, and then that's the direction I will go. When I come across it, then I will know that I have done my quality control. That's what I call it, my quality control on my binding, so that everything is A-OK -okay and there's no loose threads. Hi, so I'm glad you got to view that. Hopefully you learned a few things. I'll tell you what, what I learned is the fact that I think I need something to hold the camera while I'm quilting. And uh, I'm going shopping pretty soon. Might have some quilty trips to share with you. Not sure, but I'm going to look for something for my cell phone to try out. I've got two other little cameras. Maybe we'll try those out the next uh, video clip. We shall see. And uh, once again, if the spirit moves you, give me a like, share on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, press notifications so that you can get all my YouTubes uploaded. And there's a little bell that comes with that. Click on the bell and then you will be notified by email when I post a new YouTube video. So for now, I'd like to wish you a great day. Hope you get a chance to try these bindings. As I said, they're excellent to try on place mats or doggy mats or cat mats. Usually those little fur babies, they don't really complain about whether the stitching is done right or not. Try out your, um, your uh, fancy stitches. They're not just there for decoration. They're decorative stitches. They're meant to be used. So I'm going to wish you uh, say goodbye and uh, so on and so forth.